I was out for lunch today and as I was driving home I noticed that somebody had discarded an old VCR beside the road so I thought okay let's uh, pick this one up see whether it works and if not can we make it work it's an old Panasonic looks like it's seen better days too let's uh, check it out and see whether this one can be brought back to life got a Panasonic VCR won't blow the tape let's see what's wrong with this one okay tops off let's observe definitely have a problem that screams mode encoder switch actually that uh, that fault just the way it's doing what it's doing sure looks like a mode switch problem to me I wonder if that's all that's wrong with this one I guess there's only one way to find out let's take it apart and check it first we'll take the front cover off and we'll get the mechanism out on this one this one we remove the red screws plus two more that are down in here in case you guys forget I've worked on machines like this in the past. I got all the screws out. Oh, there's one at the bottom here. Yep. Gotta take that one out on the bottom. Oh, there's two more. Forget about these machines. Yeah, don't forget to take out the screws on the circuit board or you're gonna have a bad day. These ones have three screws in the bottom that need to come out. Now the deck will lift up. You can remove it, unplug the plug for the hi fi. Here's the mode switch on here. Never been done on this one. Good chance that that's where the problem is, but there may be other problems as well. I guess we'll find that out once we uh, get the mode switch clean. So let me just turn on the old soldering iron and we'll remove the mode switch wipe it clean and see if there's any other problems with this unit. It's important to note the mode switch when it's in the stop position there'll be a little marker on this this tooth here of the gear you can see it and this, the hole lines up that way you know your, uh, your alignment is correct I don't know the history of this machine. I found it at the side of the road.
if I fix it, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It's not like I need a VCR. I haven't used a VCR personally in many years. should lift this up and move the switch. The only reason I took all these wires out is because it was hooked around here. Okay, switch is out. You can pop the switch open by just popping the little pins together here. And we'll see how... Oh yeah, yeah this is pretty, pretty bad. We'll get some contact cleaner into there. I am using Deoxit 100, D100L. This is the pure, non-diluted form of Deoxit. I only use this because it's, it's easy to use this stuff very sparingly. I'm not wasting a bunch of spray. One drop of this stuff here and this should polish up these contacts quite nicely. As you can see, there's a fair bit of oxidation on them. We'll do the same for the switch contacts inside over here, the, the, uh, the wiper. I like to increase the tension a bit just by bending the spring contacts a little down and we'll put a couple of drops on the uh, the switch contacts and leave it there then when I put the switch back together I'll just rotate it many times just to polish the contacts up and spread around the cleaner which will keep the contacts clean for a while. At least that's the, the hope. The home position on these switches, you can see the two arrows pointing at each other. So that's where you position the switch. That also puts the, the, uh, the index hole here facing towards the other um, timing mark on the main cam gear. Put the switch back in. Just like that. Make sure that the timing mark is lined up with the timing mark on the cam gear. So there's the timing mark there. Just like that. It's pointing right at the, the uh, other timing mark which is on the main cam gear. Sometimes these belts fail, but they're usually pretty good on these Panasonic machines. There are other known issues on these machines. One of them is the, the connections here on this drive IC, which look like they've been done. That's another known issue on these ones.
We line up the two connectors at the back, push them down, and then plug the connector back in for the AFM Hi-Fi Audio heads. Being careful not to bend any pins over. Otherwise we'll create another fault. Okay. I'm not going to put the screws in until I know it works. So I'll plug the outputs in to my TV. Power the unit on. Hmm. It's interesting. It's not doing anything. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot to solder the switch on. That's what happens when you get distracted with other things. I went to turn the heat off because it was getting warm in here. And I totally forgot to solder down the switch. Okay, this time it should do something. Oh, holy smoke, that's supposed to be in play. Like this, what is this thing, an, M, an M2? model that thing is just taken off at high speed yeah so we have a problem with this one go into search it's got a picture kind of how about if I go to reverse search okay so we get a picture when I hit uh, freeze frame what buttons are what on this I wonder that's still okay let me try the buttons here so this is play reverse search so I got a picture on reverse search picture on forward search play I don't have a picture this is, where's forward search that's forward search there play and play times two there's no picture if I pause it I get a, a picture pause still So we'll just eject the tape here. So this unit seems to have a problem with the servo. It's not detecting. It's either not detecting the capstan speed or um, it won't be the control track. That won't cause it to go that type of speed.
off the top of my head, I would think this looks maybe more like a frequency generator problem for the capstan motor. Trying to think where the uh, test points are on this for the frequency generator. FG points. There's got to be a, a test point for that. Hmm. Could be the IC. Uh, could be the. It could be the servo IC here. It's bad. But the, I've got motor control. It 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 um. It goes forward and reverse. It's just not uh, locking up at the right speed. It's going into a high speed uh, search. Hmm. I got to think about this one for a few minutes because it's been a long time since I've had a failure of a, a capstan servo circuit. It could be a capacitor that's shorted. The sample and hold. Or it could be an open... FG uh, pickup. So the chip is an NE3826 NK. That's the that's the servo chip. That's this one right down here. And it processes the signals coming from the 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 reader head. And this is what this is what picks up the signal here. This looks like a tape recorder head. That's just because essentially that's what it is. On the rotor, there is a series, this is a magnetic coating, so that's why you got to be careful if you're working around here with a soldering iron. If you touch this, you will erase it, and then you'll get a speed that goes every time it makes a rotation, it'll, it'll speed up. Um, the signal, if I put my scope onto this head, I should be able to see a signal coming off the head when I rotate the motor. So let's do that and see, first of all, whether the head is actually picking up the signal produced by the motor. So let's hook the scope up to it. So the scope's connected to the pickup head. Let's take a look and see when I rotate the head like this whether we have any signal. Mr. Tektronix says that that head is putting out a signal. Therefore the frequency from this should be detected and amplified and providing my feedback control for the speed of the head or the motor. If we trace the wires coming off of the head, you'll see that they go back and they pass through onto this edge connector here, which I don't see any bad solder on here. But if we trace them, we'll find that they end up, I'm trying to see this off the screen here. It's easier to see off the screen than it is to see by looking at it at this angle. But if we trace them, we'll see that these two here on the end come around and go down to this these two jumpers which jump her over to here and where do they go looks like they go one comes around this way and ends up down on this pin here and the other one comes around and it goes this direction where's the other one go the other one comes down here, it goes this direction, ends up at this pin of the IC, and it also goes and it ends up on this pin here. So it's possible that either a connection wasn't made properly here, or it could be this IC. This is the motor drive IC. Uh, there are some capacitors around here. I couldn't find any data on this chip at all, although. Oh, some of those connections look like they might. I don't know how they look to you guys, but they kind of look a bit flaky on here. Get a better look at those with my magnifiers. I guess what I should do is I should prove continuity from the head back to the uh, connector on the back here. I 
Hmm. That's interesting. I got color duty here. But I don't have any continuity on this side. Over here. I wonder if that is broken. I mean, the connection here is good. It doesn't look to be bad there. But uh, when I test it here, I've got no continuity. This one's got continuity. This one doesn't. That might explain why it's not working. See? Here. Got continuity on this side. When I go over to this side, I've got no continuity over here. Interesting. I wonder if that's the problem. Could there be a crack? I'm just going to heat this thing up, maybe. This pin here. Oh, look at this. The trace lifted. It's broken. That trace is broken right there. <laughs> Interesting. So I should be able to jump her a little wire from the other side over here on this side of the test point. I should be able to jump her a little wire around and connect it up to this side of the board and restore the continuity and maybe that'll fix it. This thing must have been dropped or something or thrown around or whatever. Let's try that. Let's get a little piece of wire and uh, we'll jump her that and see whether that makes this thing play properly. I bet it will. trying to shove that underneath the uh, in the gap if I can get through there yeah I wonder if I should just bring it across the top or whether I've got enough through there let's just see if there's continuity now just for the hell of it I might have continuity through there now like is that pin there isn't it yeah that pin okay good I got continuity now on this pin, and I got continuity on that pin. So, what I was able to do is there's a slight gap, and I was just able to melt the solder and shove it through there, right over top of the broken tab, and get enough wire through there that it looks like it's made a connection. I don't know if it's going to last or not, but it's uh, making a connection now. Hopefully it will stay making a connection for a while. It's not like I'm going to use this thing. This is more, I know someone's going to get upset with me because just people get upset with me for everything. This is just a proof concept that it's going to work. Yeah, continuity, continuity. Shall we try it? I would say that that's success. Looks like the head might be a bit dirty on this thing. Or maybe even worn. You know what, that interference is probably coming from this plasma. See when I get my hands anywhere near there. Yeah, that's, that's, that noise, you see, that is plasma noise. If I put this on a CRT TV, that noise will go away. 
I'll do that. Let's put it on a CRT set. Looks pretty good to me. That's why I keep a CRT set in here. Because the plasma generates so much noise. If I just turn it on, watch what happens. I'll turn on the plasma, let it get going. And uh, once it fires up, if I put my hand anywhere near the head, okay, I'm not touching the head, but I'm just bringing my hand close to the, uh, the head itself. You see the interference? Now I'll just turn the plasma off. Now the plasma just clicked off, interference gone. That's, uh, that gives you an idea of how much interference plasma TVs cause to electronics. So this one is done. That's all I need to do to this. Put the top back on it, and this VCR will be ready to uh, throw in the garbage. No, no, I won't throw it in the garbage. I'll give it away. You know, every so often I get someone who asks me if I have any VCRs that I want to get rid of, and they say, here, here, take one. I give away old VCRs. Or sell them dirt cheap. I usually try to get 20 bucks from them. If someone wants a VCR that's been serviced, I'll say, here, I'll give you one. I've overhauled it. It's 20 bucks. It's going to last you for a while. And that'll be the same. That'll, that'll be what happens with this one here. Or, I'll let it sit until it breaks again. And then we can make another video with it. Anyway, this one's fixed. And, um, hope you guys enjoyed the troubleshooting on this. It wasn't, it wasn't that bad, actually, because I knew, as soon as I saw that capsule motor take off like that, I knew it had to be something to do with the frequency generator. There's also, um, Hall Effect devices, but when they fail, the Hall Effect devices on these direct drive motors are used not so much for speed, but to determine what way the rotor is turning okay, because it's a three-phase motor so they use two Hall Effect devices so that when the motor starts turning it can determine which direction the motor is turning so if you have a Hall Effect device that fails the motor won't turn at all or it'll just it'll go it'll quiver so um, that might be something actually to do that might be that might be a, a makeup video where we'll disable a Hall Effect sensor just to show what happens when one goes bad because they do fail once in a while. So that might be an idea. But um, for now, that's this one done. No, we had two faults with this. We had a, a mode switch that was bad. That's why it wouldn't load the tape. But once the mode switch was clean, it took off at like 100 miles an hour and wouldn't play the tape in play. But we could search and we could freeze frame. So freeze frame proved that the, the video head was working and that the servo was working fine for the drum. It was just a, a capstan servo problem. So there we go. Troubleshooting 101. That was a relatively easy one, but a problem that really doesn't happen that often. And it looks like all of the problem was was where it passed through the circuit board here, um, the, the trace was damaged right at the point where it went through this one. The other board feeds through and was soldered on right at that point is where the failure was because we had continuity on one side and we didn't have it on the other. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one real soon, I hope. Bye for now.